Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, risk factors for COPD and we're going to focus on uh, relative pulmonary artery enlargement as seen on CT scan uh, and what uh, and how this how this plays in. Uh, for the purposes of this talk, I don't have any financial relationships to disclose. Uh, so COPD exacerbations are a very important part of the natural history of COPD. They're associated with increased dyspnea, cough, sputum production, uh, wheezing, sputum purulence. Um, these events uh, are associated with increased loss of lung function and poor qualities of life. Uh, in the U.S., they're very expensive. They're over $18 billion a year. Uh, in direct costs uh, just from uh, the hospitalization and, and associated care. And in a VA study, uh, patients who survive this initial hospitalization have a 21% uh, one-year mortality uh, and about half of them uh, die at five years. So uh, because of these things, it's very important to recognize these people. And we were uh, fortunate enough uh, through the aid of the Eclipse study, which was a GSK-sponsored study, an observational cohort uh, that spanned three years, uh, to identify some clinical uh, variables. Uh, when they looked at a lot of these uh, things, some uh, kind of five, five different um, uh, metrics came out as being uh, important uh, in predicting exacerbations. Of those, uh, the most important one was having an, a prior exacerbation. So had it before, get it again. Uh, other things were lung function, quality of life, uh, the presence of GERD, and white count. Uh, these five factors don't take into account all of the variability that, uh, and risk of having an exacerbation. Uh, so we, we kind of brainstormed and were uh, interested in some other comorbidities, which uh, led us to looking into pulmonary vascular disease. So on the right here, this is an older study looking at patients who had COPD and documented uh, pulmonary hypertension uh, based on right heart catheterization, and they had a shorter time to hospitalization uh, compared to those who did not have pulmonary hypertension. And for those that were hospitalized, pulmonary hypertension was an important uh, predictor of mortality related to exacerbation. Uh, and it was, it was second, basically, to the presence of cancer. Um, pulmonary hypertension uh, and COPD primarily is through um, hypoxic vasoconstriction and more advanced disease. Uh, however, it's becoming more in increasingly recognized that uh, there's sort of this outer proportion pulmonary hypertension that occurs at earlier stages of COPD. And uh, whatever that mechanism is, is still sort of poorly understood. It could be related to congestive heart failure, either systolic failure or diastolic uh, dysfunction, uh, related to inflammation, um, uh, whether it's uh, a, a process of uh, emphysema and it's associated capillary loss, or if it's um, related to just other comorbid conditions, whether it's uh, sleep apnea and overlap syndrome, or if it's venothromboembolic disease or um, you know something else. Uh, the gold standard for diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension uh, is right heart catheterization, but this isn't routinely employed in patients with COPD uh, for various reasons, including, um, you know, the risks associated with it, and, um, you know, it's not really, you know, it's, it, it, and I guess particularly in earlier disease, it's just not really done. So we set out to look at non-invasive uh, ways to look for pulmonary vascular disease. And in the literature, there have been two sort of uh, metrics that have been described. One is just looking at the pulmonary diameter of the main pulmonary artery. And if it's greater than 2.9 centimeters, uh, it, it had a, a, a moderate correlation with invasive metrics of uh, pulmonary hypertension. Um, but it, it was kind of, it has its own problems. Um, uh, you know, body size, age, uh, gender, a lot of these things sort of can vary it. And, and it's not as reproducible across different types of CT scan or in different CT techniques, et cetera. Uh, so then we got, became interested in this, in this other metric, uh, which is the PA to A ratio of greater than one. And so that's um, taking the diameter of the main pulmonary artery 
and standardizing it to the diameter of the ascending aorta from the same axial CT slice, and I'll go through this a little more in depth later, but it's, it, it uh, corrects for a lot of these uh, differences in body size and uh, et cetera. So our hypothesis was that this, rel uh, this relative pulmonary artery enlargement or by a PA to A ratio of greater than one would be associated uh, with uh, the COPD exacerbations uh, and hospitalization. So we, we used two different uh, cohorts. Uh, our, our main cohort was through the COPD gene population. And for those of y'all who are not familiar with that, it's a 21 uh, center uh, NIH sponsored observational cohort looking for genetic uh, abnormalities in, in COPD. And really one of the main things that's come out of it uh, have been a lot of imaging uh, techniques. Um, and uh, to date they've enrolled over 10,000 uh, subjects. And for the purposes of this study, we focused on goal two through four uh, COPD and looked at over uh, 3,400 patients that had CT data. And uh, the Eclipse study, which I mentioned before, was uh, a multi-center, multinational, three-year observational cohort that was uh, sponsored by uh, Glaxo. Uh, they've already finished their uh, the study, and we had a uh, 2,000 subjects uh, that had baseline and uh, one and three-year data, as well as CT scans. Uh, we did a, a logistic and a negative. Uh, binomial regression modeling to determine some of these associations. Um, for the purposes of COPD exacerbations in the literature, the definition uh, varies from study to study. Um, and uh, for the purposes of what we analyzed, all exacerbations were self-reported by patients, and we stratified them based on a mild to moderate exacerbation, which was the need for antibiotics or steroids uh, treated either as an outpatient or in the emergency room, and then in severe were the, those exacerbations that required hospitalization. This was the, the main thing that we focused on. Um, this is sort of a 3D rendering of the, of the spatial relationship between the pulmonary artery seen here in blue and the aorta uh, from an axial scan. Uh, there were two uh, blinded investigators that uh, measured these, had really good intra-observer agreement and good inter-observer inter agreement between uh, the two of us. And this is just uh, that spatial relationship overlaid on, a, on an axial CT scan. And here you see where we actually made the measurement, so right at the, at the side of the bifurcation for the pulmonary artery and then the aorta. Um, and these are some representative images. So on the left here, you see this is kind of the, this is the figure from before, uh, but kind of a normal PA to A ratio. And then on the right, you obviously can see that there's uh, some pulmonary artery enlargement, and that's one of the ones that has a ratio over one. Uh, so we, we separated these patients out into uh, a PA to A ratio of greater than or less than one. Uh, roughly a third of them uh, had, a, had a ratio of uh, over one, and the groups were very different uh, when, when broken down uh, this way. There were significantly more females, African Americans. Uh, they had slightly worse uh, lung function as measured either, either by FEV1 or by gold stage, and they were more obese. Uh, other comorbidities, again, were different, um, but primarily uh, congestive heart failure, thromboembolic disease, and sleep apnea were, were, were much more common, and they were twice as uh, prevalent uh, in the PA to A ratio greater than one group. And uh, as to be expected, uh, they were more of them uh, were on supplemental oxygen. Um, other sort of readouts between the groups, so measures of kind of functional status and symptoms. Uh, so the PA to A group had uh, significantly less. Uh, exercise capacity on a six minute walk test. They were more symptomatic on a St. George uh, respiratory questionnaire and they were more breathless on a, on a shortness of breath scale. Uh, as I said before, they had worse lung function uh, by uh, mean FEV1. Uh, and, and we looked at some other CT metrics and, and these patients had uh, increased uh, fourth generation wall area percent and increased emphysema on CT as well. Uh, so from, from here, we first set out to look at this, at, at, the, at the ratio uh, based on, and, or sorry, compared to 
uh, a history of severe exacerbation in the first 12 years to sort of develop the model. And when we, when we looked across all, uh, all ranges, there was a clear threshold for uh, severe exacerbations uh, at a value of one. And when we applied our uh, stepwise uh, uh, backward uh, logistic regression model, these were the four uh, parameters that, that came out as being uh, significantly uh, independently associated with a, with a history of exacerbation. So lung function, St. George, uh, age, and then uh, most importantly, the PA to A ratio had a really uh, strong correlation. Um, we then set out to validate this in a, in a follow-up format, and again, similar to what we had seen with the history of exacerbations, um, same, same pattern is seen where uh, once you reach a threshold of a PA to A uh, ratio of over one, um, there's, a, there's a significant increase in uh, severe exacerbation uh, frequency. Um, and we then uh, applied our uh, parameters that we derived from our, uh, from our initial model and then added those to other factors that were seen as being important from the eclipse uh, trial, including prior exacerbations and the presence of uh, reflux. Uh, and, and similar to what was seen in the, in the Hearst paper, uh, exacerbation still uh, still had a, a, a decent odds ratio, but the P to A ratio greater than one had the strongest uh, association with, with uh, exacerbations in a prospective, uh, in a prospective uh, cohort. Um, because this is a new technique, uh, we looked at the eclipse trial, as I mentioned before, and so we were fortunate enough to have one and three year data, and uh, just like in the COPD gene group, the PA to A ratio at both one and three years had the strongest correlation to severe exacerbations in eclipse as well. Um, so is this only good for patients that are hospitalized or, or is this something that could be applied to all types of exacerbations? And in, and in fact, uh, it, it does still have a, a strong correlation with any exacerbation, although at one year in eclipse, it wasn't, it wasn't as good as, as a history of prior exacerbation. So uh, one of the big things we're looking into now is what, what exactly is the mechanism for developing uh, a P to A ratio of greater than one? Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, it, it, it likely reflects uh, underlying pulmonary hypertension, and uh, this was one of the supplementary figures in our, in our article, and this was taking a small subset of the COPD gene patients that had echoes, and there was a, there was a fair correlation uh, on uh, linear regression uh, with an R value of 0.61, and this has been something that's been similar uh, when looked at just the PA alone or the PA to A ratio in, uh, in different lung disease groups. Um, in the past, and uh, Anand Iyer, uh, one of the residents, has uh, been interested in this as well, and, and we've looked at our transplant population uh, that has COPD here, and uh, have done the same thing looking at uh, right heart catheterization derived uh, mean pulmonary artery pressures and then the PA to A ratio, and, and again, it's a, it's a, a fairly, you know, it's, it's an okay um, R value for, uh, for this association. Uh, and, uh, in doing um, kind of multivariate uh, linear regression models and, and, uh, and some uh, multivariate logistic regression analysis as well, it, it, does, it does independently predict the presence of pulmonary hypertension. Uh, so another thing would be uh, a potential redistribution of blood flow. So as, as you develop emphysema, you get peripheral capillary uh, loss and small vessel loss. And this, uh, you know, one of the thoughts is that the, the blood is sort of shunted more centrally, and this may just be a reflection of that centralization of flow. And this is a paper that uh, is currently in revision right now at, a, at a, a journal, and this is some really sophisticated CT analysis, but this is on the, pa on the left is a patient that has uh, um, no lung disease, and uh, you see that there's all these very small kind of uh, capillaries and very small arterioles. And then in someone with advanced COPD, you see all this peripheral capillary loss. 
Uh, and so that's sort of one of the other uh, things we think may be related. And then the other thing would be, as I sort of alluded to in the beginning, could this be a, just a composite endpoint for a multitude of other uh, various conditions, whether it's uh, you know, hyperinflation or if it's diastolic dysfunction, uh, sleep apnea, thromboembolic disease, or one of these other things. It's, you know, those are, are the areas that we're exploring. And just to sort of hit at the hyperinflation, when you look at the IC to TLC ratio of less than 25, uh, there is an association um, with a, you know, the patients with a PA to A ratio of greater than one do have a higher uh, amount of hyperinflation as seen by that. And, you know, and this is uh, sort of uh, something that we're investigating further right now. So uh, the conclusions from our article are that the, P the PA to A ratio of greater than one is strongly associated with uh, developing a severe COPD exacerbation uh, in, in two uh, independent cohorts. Uh, and this has really been the first study to look at uh, CT metrics of pulmonary vascular disease and clinical uh, outcomes. And, uh, and it looks like that this outperforms a lot of the well-established risks, including prior hospitalization. So uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Dransfield uh, for his mentorship through this. Uh, uh, Nasir Abbas was a visiting uh, uh, MD, uh, who's now in residency in Missouri, and Dr. Bailey and Dr. Nath, who uh, was instrumental in uh, the development of the technique, and then uh, collaborators George Washko and uh, Raul at Brigham and Melon Hahn at the University of Michigan, as well as the uh, Eclipse Steering Committee and the COPD Gene Group.